Welcome back to part two of this video on phasor diagrams and how we can use phasor diagrams to both add and subtract waveforms from one another. So in our previous video, we saw that we could take these two waveforms, V1 and V2, and represent them in the form of a phasor diagram. So here I have V1 and V2 represented as phasors on my diagram here. If you haven't seen part one of the video, I would recommend going back to look at how we set up that diagram. But we showed that by drawing a phasor diagram, we can determine the resultant uh, of V1 plus V2. We've added these two waveforms together to get V1 plus V2, which we can see on the diagram there. And we also went further to work out the value of V1 plus V2, or the, the length of the vector there, and also the angle that that vector is from the horizontal. In this video, we're going to look at how we can, rather than add those two waveforms, how we can subtract them from one another. And the method is very similar. When we originally set up our diagram, like we have here, we said that by default, a phasor points to the horizontal, to the right. And if it has a positive phase shift, it would tilt upwards. If it has a negative phase shift, like V2 has, at minus 30 degrees, it would tilt downwards by that angle. And so we have our V2 at minus 30 there. But in this video, like we say, we're not looking to add V1 and V2. We're looking to subtract V2 from V1. And so we're looking for V1 minus V2. Now, if we consider that our first diagram was for V1 plus V2, V1 remains the same in both instances. It's a positive number. And V2, rather than being a positive in the first instance in our previous video, it's now a negative, minus V2. And because we have minus V2, we have to reflect that on the diagram. And the way we do that is simply by representing V2 as pointing in completely the opposite direction. So pointing in 180 degrees rotation from its original position. So if we imagine our diagram at present shows V2 pointing down to the right, tilting downwards by 30 degrees, then what we'll find is minus V2, if I sketch it on my graph here, will point somewhere in this direction. So I'll mark that on, minus V2. And because we know that this total angle here um, is 180 degrees from minus V2 all the way around to plus V2, and we have 30 degrees from the horizontal, the remaining angle must be 150 degrees. So I'll mark that on as well. So let's set this diagram up properly and show how we can find the resultant of V1 minus V2. So here I have my diagram amended for V1 minus V2. You can see, first of all, that V1 remains pretty much the same as our first diagram. It has a length of 10, because that reflects the amplitude of V1. And because V1 has no phase shift, we said that by default, it points to the right like so. V2, we said, is going to tilt upwards by 150 degrees. Now, you'll notice that I've split that 150 degrees into a right angle, 90 degrees, and the remaining 60 degrees. And we'll see in a second why that's the case. But V2 also has an amplitude of 5, and that's reflected by the length of the line as well. It's a shorter vector than V1. Now, similar to when we looked at adding those two waveforms, we saw how we needed to convert these two vectors to horizontal and vertical components in order to find the sum of V1 and V2. And we need to do the same for V1 minus V2. What we'll find is that if we set up our diagram correctly, we can do the same thing as we saw in our first video, whereby setting up roughly some kind of parallelogram arrangement, we can actually find that V1 minus V2 
is going to point somewhere in this direction. But as in our last diagram, we don't know the length of this line, this vector, and we don't know the angle that it's at from the horizontal. And so we need to use our vertical and horizontal components again to try and figure out the resultant vector there. So let's first of all look at V1. We can see that V1 is just a horizontal line. It points straight to the right um, on our phasor diagram. And so we know that it has no vertical component. It's not traveling upwards or downwards at all. So its horizontal component must be 10 and its vertical component must be 0. V2 or minus V2 is a little bit different because it does have a vertical component as well as a horizontal component. And so similarly, we need to use trigonometry in order to work out the horizontal and vertical components in this case. So if we have a look closely at our diagram here at V2, we can see that V2 is um, a triangle, a right angle triangle, we can imagine, which has a marked angle of 60 degrees. And so if I complete this diagram of the triangle uh, on the page here, so I mark on the opposite side to the marked angle, and the adjacent is this side uh, running down alongside the angle, and then we have the hypotenuse of the angle marked as 5. So first of all, to work out the horizontal component, the horizontal component is going to be the opposite um, side to the angle. And we can say using trigonometry that the opposite is equal to the hypotenuse multiplied by sine of the angle. And in our case, that's going to be 5 times sine 60. Similarly for the adjacent, the adjacent in our case is going to be the hypotenuse times cos of the angle. And so for us, that's 5 times cos 60. And so for our first value there, the opposite, 5 times sine 60, I get a value of 4.33. And for the adjacent, I get a value of 2.5. Make sure that your calculator is set to degrees rather than radians when you're working out these values. But one thing to mention is, for our opposite side, this is going to represent the horizontal component, and the adjacent is going to represent the vertical component. And so, because the opposite is taking us to the left, i.e. the opposite direction to V1, we have to regard this as a negative number. So, when we put that into our um, values on the left there, I'm going to say that that horizontal component is minus 4.33. Anything pointing to the left or pointing downwards should be regarded as negative. Anything pointing to the right or pointing upwards should be positive. And so because our adjacent side, the, the vertical component, is pointing upwards, we can regard this as a positive number. And we said that that was positive 2.5. So now that we have our components, we can work out our total horizontal component and our total vertical component. First of all, we have a horizontal component of 10 from V1, and we also have a horizontal component of negative 4.33 from our V2. So together, they give us a total horizontal component of 5.67. Our vertical components, 0 for V1 and 2.5 for V2, obviously give us a total of 2.5 as well. 
Now that we know the total horizontal and vertical components, we can start to figure out the length of our vector, v1 minus v2, as well as the angle that it's at from the horizontal. Let's have a look at how we might do that. Going back to our original diagram here, we now know that v1 minus v2 has a horizontal component of 5.67 and it has a vertical component of 2.5 and so our resultant vector pointing somewhere in this direction v1 minus v2 has an angle from the horizontal like so and we can figure out the length of this vector as well as the angle by again using trigonometry. First of all the length of the vector because again this is a right angle triangle we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So we can say that whatever the resultant of v1 minus v2 squared is is equal to 5.67 squared plus 2.5 squared. And for that, I get an answer of 38.4. But remember, this is v1 plus v2 squared. And so v1 minus v2, I would have to square root 38.4 to get the final answer of 6.2. Finally, we said we could also work out the angle in this case. And to do that, we again use the same trigonometric identity as we used last time, which was to say that tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And in this case, we know that the opposite to our marked angle, here's our marked angle in this case, the opposite side to that marked angle is 2.5, the adjacent to that angle is 5.67. So tan of the angle is going to be equal to 2.5 over 5.67. And so finally, as in our last video, we have to say that theta, the angle, is equal to tan to the minus 1 of 2.5 over 5.67. And this gives me an angle of 23.79 degrees. And so we can mark that angle on here as well as 23.79 degrees. And the length of my vector as 6.2. And so as a result, we can write a formula for v1 minus v2, which we can say uh, is 6.2 sine omega t plus 23.79. So I hope you found these two videos useful. First of all, on how to set up vector diagrams or phasor diagrams and then how we can use that diagram to either add two waveforms together in our first video or in this video to subtract them from one another.